Focus on your breath. No one is coming in. No one is going out. Notice where you feel it. And focus your attention on those sensations. You have to be careful, though, in how you focus. If you put too much pressure on the breath, it starts getting constricted. It doesn't feel comfortable. If your attention for the breath is too light, then it slips off, floats away. So find just the right amount of pressure to maintain on the breath, pressure of your attention. Allow the breath, however, to flow as freely as possible in the body. We often make that mistake by tensing up around something in order to highlight it in our attention. But that's going to get in the way of the breath being a pleasurable place to stay, which is what you need as you meditate, a good place to stay. Because if the mind doesn't find any sense of ease in the present moment, it's going to go wandering off looking someplace else. So experiment with the breathing. You can do it one of two ways. Just pose the question in your mind, what kind of breathing would feel really good right now with this breath, and see how the body responds. Or you can go about it more systematically in order to expand the body's sense of what it can do, the mind's sense of what the breath is capable of. Ask yourself, what would longer breathing feel like? And think of the breath growing longer for a while. Then how still longer, what would that feel like? And then go shorter, deeper or more shallow, heavier or lighter. Try to push the envelope. Until you get a sense of what kind of breathing really does feel good right now. It's important that you learn how to play with the breath in this way. It may seem counterintuitive. We're trying to get to something unconditioned and unfabricated, and we go about it by fabricating. But the whole path is a kind of fabrication. Every factor of that Eightfold Noble Path, from right view down to right concentration, is something that's put together. It's a fabrication. It's something you will. But to will skillfully, you have to make it a pleasant place to stay. This is why right concentration is such an important part of the path. It gives you a good place to stay, a sense of ease, well-being, refreshment, or rapture. So play around with the breath. You have permission to play. And don't think that that's going to get in the way of insight. It actually helps create the conditions for insight to arise. For one, it gives stamina to the practice. If you're simply sitting with whatever comes up, meditation becomes an exercise in whatever comes up, sometimes nice, sometimes not so nice. And if there's no pleasure in the meditation, no sense of rapture or gratification, it becomes dull and unattractive, and you find it harder and harder to actually sit down and keep up with the practice day after day. But if you allow the meditation to be a process of exploring, finding what's really comfortable right now, you can stick with it. It becomes something interesting, something you want to do. As you're with it, it's this process of experimenting with the breath, getting it more pleasurable, and allowing that sense of pleasure to seep throughout the body it gives you more steadiness in the present moment. And the interest you develop in exploring this breath energy in the body, that helps you stay steadily in the present as well. If it's simply a matter of watching whatever comes up, it gets boring very quickly. The mind is going to find reasons to do other things, to slip away and 
find other other things that are more interesting. And allowing the breath to be comfortable gives you a good foundation in the present moment, because pains will come up, and we need the right attitude toward them, not to feel threatened, not to run away. Our duty with regard to pain is to comprehend it, and you're not going to comprehend it if you feel that you are threatened by it. So it's good to know that you have a good, comfortable place to go to whenever you need to. Say there's a pain in your leg and you're not really ready to deal with it yet. You can focus on the sense of ease and fullness you may, you may be developing, say, in the chest, in the stomach, in your hands, in your feet, through the way you breathe. So you know that if things get bad with a pain, you can go back to the breath. Once the mind feels nourished by the breath, it's going to be more willing to actually look into the pain, probe into the pain. Try to understand, what is this pain I have in my body? Why do I fear it so much? Is it really as fearsome as it seems? You can start taking it apart. Which part of the pain is actually a physical sensation, and which part is the mental perception that makes things worse in the mind? And even with that physical sensation, what of it, which part of it actually is a pain? Because you also have sensations of the different elements in your body, which are more like properties of how the body feels from within. There's solidity, and there's liquidity, and there's warmth, and there's energy. And how does the pain relate to those? Because it's a different kind of sensation. Liquid is just liquid. Solid is just solid. It doesn't have to be painful. But there's a pain flitting around in there. And if you glom it together with the other properties, especially the property of, of earth or solidity, it makes the pain seem a lot more solid and a lot more threatening than it actually is. So if you're coming from a position of well-being, a position of solidity, it's easier to see these things. Because your agenda isn't necessarily to make the pain go away. You want to learn about it. Then as you develop a greater sensitivity to the breathing, a greater sensitivity to how you fashion the breath, what element intention plays in the breath, you start seeing more and more subtle levels of stress that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. And you see more subtle levels of fabrication that you wouldn't have seen otherwise as well. Because one of the big lessons in the meditation is not that the present moment is a given, but you're actually shaping the present moment with your intentions. And the best way to sensitize yourself to that is to try to fashion it skillfully. And then you get a sense of when you should change things and when you shouldn't try to change things. which problems in the body, which problems in the mind respond to active intervention, and which ones respond better to simply watching with equanimity. And you put the mind in a better mood through giving it a good, comfortable place to stay, or giving it something to explore in the breath. It becomes more open to seeing its own mistakes. It can take its mistakes with a greater sense of cheerfulness, even. Because when the mind is in a bad mood, it's like a person in a bad mood. If you want to talk to that person about where he's been unskillful, where he's been outrageous or whatever in his behavior, if he's in a foul mood, he's not going to want to hear anything. He's going to resist everything you say. But if he's well-fed and in a good mood, it's a lot easier to broach the topic of his shortcomings. And it's the same with the mind, because a lot of what we're going to learn in the process of understanding the mind is seeing its subterfuges, where it lies to itself, where it's been dishonest with itself, things we don't like to see. And yet if we don't admit those things to ourselves, insight will never have a chance. You can't just put the mind through a, a meditation grinder 
and hope that the process is going to take care of it. The mind has to learn to see where it's been lying to itself, where it's been dishonest with itself, for genuine insight to arise. So the breath helps put you in the right mood to learn those lessons. In this game we play with the breath, trying to keep it more comfortable, trying to get it more refined, seeing how still we can get everything without forcing it unnaturally. In other words, getting the mind to grow more and more still. When there's a sense of ease, you have to have a sense of how much fiddling around becomes too much fiddling around. When the breath gets comfortable enough for you, that you can stay with the body, feels good to be with the whole body breathing in, the whole body breathing out, then just allow it to do its thing. And as the mind stills down, then the breath calms down as well. This is a common pattern throughout the Buddha's meditation instructions. You try to get a sense of what is the fabrication going on. And then once you're sensitive to the fabrication, then you allow it to still, to grow still. And this gives you some insight into that fact that you are shaping the present moment. And you need to do it more, with more skill, with more finesse, with a greater sense of sensitivity and subtlety. And you can get there only by consciously trying to fabricate things. Fabricate your sense of the body through the breathing. Fabricate your mind through the perceptions you hold. It's the sensitivity that develops over time that allows you to see the subtleties of these processes. If you're trying to go in with the beginning say, I'm just not going to do anything, I'm going to watch what's already there. A lot of what's really happening goes underground and you don't see it. So this way, as you consciously try to fabricate a sense of well-being in the body, a sense of ease in the mind, through the way you breathe, through the way you relate to the breath, you see that process more clearly. Again, more honesty comes into the mind. So it's important as you meditate, you realize you have permission to play, play with the breath. Because this is how maturity develops in any field. Children who don't get a chance to play never really mature. The same principle applies to meditators. If you don't learn how to play with the present moment, you never get to develop a mature understanding of the present moment. You never get to that point where you can drop every element of intention that's creating the present, that allows you to open up to something that's outside of space and time. That happiness we're all looking for, which is totally independent of conditions, totally reliable. Because only when we have a reliable happiness can we rely on ourselves. You see this around us. All, all over the place now, as the economy is collapsing and, and there are more murders out there, more suicides, more robberies. As people's sense of well-being gets more threatened, this is when we see where how strong people's sense of their inner wealth is. The more wealth you have inside, the less you are worried about wealth outside. Unless you worry about wealth outside, the more you can trust yourself to do the skillful thing, to say the skillful thing, to think the skillful thing in any situation. And if you can train the mind to the point where it's found something that can't be touched by anything at space and time, but it can be touched through our inner awareness. As the Buddha says, you touch it with a body, or you see it with a body. In other words, it's a total experience. It's not just a vision, it's not just an idea. It's visceral. Once you've had your first glimpse of that, you know that you have a reliable happiness, and the other pleasures of the world 
are less important and are less likely to make you do unskillful things to protect them, because you realize you have something that doesn't need protection. That's where the meditation gets really good. But the only way you can develop that maturity, as I said, is in the way any person develops maturity, you start out by playing, playing around, learning about cause and effect by nudging this cause, i.e. the breath, see what that does to the mind, what it does to the sense of ease in the body, nudging that another cause, say, your perception of the breath. If you see it only as air coming in out of the lungs, you're really limiting yourself. Think of other ways you might perceive this energy in the body, flowing through the blood, blood vessels, flowing through the nerves, flowing around the nerves, flowing out to every pore in the skin, having everything in the body all connecting up. And John Lee's images of cutting roads through a jungle, so you have a whole system of roads in there. Communication gets easier. It's by playing around in this way that you start outgrowing your childish attitudes. It's through play that children become adults. So each time you sit down and meditate, remember you have permission to play. That's what the meditation is all about.